We'll talk next to Thomas, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Hank. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for your ministry. Uh, appreciate you a lot. And uh, I have a two-part question regarding the Lord Jesus Christ. And the question has been bothering me a little bit since yesterday when I was reading Hebrews 1, where the scriptures speak of the exaltation of Christ. And I know that the quote is from, uh, from the Psalms. Um, and I'd like to read what what was uh, what I read from Hebrews 1, if that's okay. Sure. Um, Hebrews 1, 3 to 5. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. For again I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And I'm having some measure of trouble reconciling these verses with the verses that I'm thinking of, specifically from John, where Jesus is spoken of as being the eternal Word, the one who came from the Father and was returning to the Father. Um, And my question is this. Wasn't Jesus eternally begotten of the Father, and thus always his Son? And so why did the Father say to the Son, You are my Son today, I've begotten you. I will be his Father, and he shall be my Son. And I have a follow-up question. I'll let you answer the question. Sure. I have a follow-up question. Yeah, well, actually, you know, in comparing Scripture with Scripture, Paul actually deals with this in the book of Acts. And what he does is he equates the idea of begetting with the idea of resurrection. So this is in the sense of begotten, not made, and does have in a very substantive way in view relationships within the Godhead. But Paul himself in the book of Acts says, we tell you the good news. What God promised our fathers, he has fulfilled for us their children by raising up Jesus. And then as evidence, he says, as it is written in the second Psalm, you are my son, today I become your father. So again, he's equating the idea of begottenness with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The fact that God raised him from the dead never to decay is stated in these words, says Paul, I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is stated elsewhere, you will not let your holy one see decay. So Paul makes the argument of begottenness here having to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. And my follow-up question. If it was after the resurrection and ascension of Christ that the Father said this to him, wouldn't that give some credence to what Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons say about Christ, that he was an exalted angel who assisted God in creation, and then after his earthly ministry was adopted as the Father's Son in his ascension, rather than what Orthodox theologians have always said, that he's the eternal Son of God? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, but again, for the very argument I just gave you, the answer would be no, it doesn't give any warrant for it whatsoever. But there's more uh, to the argument than that. First of all, you realize that this has to do with relationships within the Godhead, has to do with the resurrection. And the Bible explicitly tells us that Jesus Christ is before all things, that he created the angels, that he created everything that has been created. And the Jehovah's Witnesses recognizing the power of that statement, Colossians chapter 1, starting at verse 15, I actually have to insert the word other four times in the text to have Jesus Christ before all other things as opposed to before all things. So, yeah, I mean, the Bible makes clear in a lot of different ways that Jesus is the creator of all things, number one, even angels. Number two, that Jesus Christ will receive worship, whereas angels never will. For example, in the book of Revelation, when John bows down to worship at the feet of an angel who's showing him the vision, the angel says, do not do that. He will not receive worship because worship is something that only God is due. Right, absolutely. And he's spoken of as the, as the Lamb of God, and and worships as the Lamb of God. Amen. It's the way to send the world. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for your answer, Hank. Thank you for your time, brother. You got it.